Hello, oh, welcome back. So let's move to pra practical stuff. So the previous videos, we introduced the problem, what we're going to do, general introduction also to the foundations of uh, optimization that cut out uh, any black box solver. In this case, we're using OpenFun. So now let's do the first case. So remember that we're going to do that. We have this geometry. We have parameterize this geometry using four points with we see a curve and everything is generated in geometry mesh using Salome here we have our general loop and in the first case we're going to use a uh, gradient based optimization in particular we're going to use this method the method feasible direction remember that in gradient based we need to formulate a problem okay so sit down understand what you're doing and so on so let's work in this case so I will run here and if you are using our Windows Assistant Linux, no image, you will have everything there. But in any case, you have in the video description where to download the files. But let me go here and you should have this data structure there. And you see that we have many cases. We're going to work each one of these, but we're going to focus in gradient based optimization. OK, so here you have the classical files okay the the workflow so we have the input file of the coda then the simulator the script always you are going to to find a readme file so just read it sometimes it put some comments there uh here you have the solution so i already run here but you have the table out you have the whole uh the whole trace of open phone just the table out of the code and then here you have the template file the, remember this is the files that are going to to be parameterized so let me address this okay remember you need as well the case base the one that you know that is always working so we have a case here it's always working i'm not going to run but just to show you what is happening here is that we generated the geometry using salome in salome you can parameterize things and you can write uh, a python script so this is the script okay everything is done i'm not going into details here this requires another video probably if I receive enough votes. I can show how to do this, but it's very straightforward. Okay. So basically what we're doing here is that these are our variables, the points that are controlling. Okay. And this here later, I'm going to parameterize. This is what the code is going to change. So just to show you that in the template there. So this is a base case. It's working. You have the instruction there, how to run it. But the parametrical variable here in the templates is this script. And look at that, it's very easy to parameterize. So now we're not anymore like in the cavity case that we were in the open phone dictionaries. Now it's something else, okay? So remember that you can parameterize anything in theory. So see by, by just adding curly braces, the name of the variables, you are able to parameterize. So by changing this one, we're going to get different different shapes. So name it, this is what we're going to do. So change these points and then get this and well we force this case and this is our optimal solution so let's see how things work so now we know what is our parametric variable so at this point let's move and run so i reminded also of what we're doing here let me go he here so we need to formulate the problem we have our design vector we need to compute a quantity or many quantities of interest in this case is drag these are the four points you need to also give linear and nonlinear constraints. Our linear constraint will be the, the the size of our domain. Okay, how big and how large you want to be this design vector. But also you can add nonlinear constraints. So in this case, we're not adding nonlinear constraints. Okay? But let's see. I will do another video just to show you how to do it. That because that nonlinear constraint is a quantity that you need to compute. It's not a design variable. It will be like a quantity of interest or so for instance can be the area of that shape so you need to multiply the coordinates or whatever so somehow you need to comp comp compute that so it's, it's red if it's, it's not a big deal so our general optimization loop the most general one is that you have your optimization tool can be any tool in this case the coda then that tool needs to generate some input parameter to you to your black box tool and then your black box tool will generate an output that needs to be post-processed and render not useful for the optimization tool so in the specific of this case it will be something like this that we're working we're going to visit this when we're going to do our loop there so now let me go 
and look at the specific in, in Dakota. So we have Dakota, the input file. We can run everything sequentially or concurrent. We're going to see how to do that. Dakota is going to generate a, param a parameter file. This parameter file will be the input for our simulation script here, our black box solver. So here there is a filter. So this information that Dakota is generating that by no means can be digested by Salome or by by open needs to be filtered, substitute, substitute into the script. So namely will be this. This is the filter that we're applying. So in Dakota it's an a, a utility called the prepro, but you can implement any, any utility to do that. So we do, we filter that one, we substitute files, we run. Then when we run the solver, we're going to get an output that needs to be filtered again in the specific format that Dakota likes. And then it keeps looping. And let me talk about that specific form. And now I'm going to go here into documentation. It's very important. The code documentation is section. It's on invite you to really get familiar with methods and so on. But what is important is this, the Dakota resolve file. Okay. The one, the specific one that I'm talking here, this output filter, because it's not like you're going to get any output from the solver and then Dakota will understand what is it. You need to format that. Uh, in the uh, in, in, in the format that Dakota likes, so that specific format is like this. So here we have Dakota resolve file format, and Dakota likes this file in this format. So first you have. Uh, you will have here your response functions followed by, or uh, sorry, your objective functions or calibration terms, then followed by nonlinear inequalities, followed by nonlinear equalities, followed by gradient, followed by hastens. Usually here we don't know gradients and hastens. So usually CFD, that information is computed numerically. But as you are doing, let's say, toy, toy cases where you have your function, you can give that information as well here if you want to compute it. But we're going to limit just to the first one that will be objective function, quantity of interest, and nonlinear inequalities, quality if you have them. So this file needs to be in this very specific format. First quantity, second quantity, third quantity, and so on as you have them. So in this case, it will be a simple a very simple text file. Let me show you that uh, usually I put there to deal with that in our base case. I put a dummy file and that format needs to be something like that. So in this case, if you have, for instance, three uh, quantity of interest or one quantity of interest with linear constraints it needs to be like this. So in our case, we have only one, you put one. So remember that the software that you're going to use will give you information. So you need to post process to put it like that. As you see, it's super, super simple. And that is the most important thing that you need to, to know at this point. So now we're ready to run. So let me close here and I will go to the directory grad. Remember that we're using open phone 11. So let me load the debatable. Also the Dakota version that I'm using is the latest one. If I would recall 6.18. So at this point in theory, we're ready to run, but let's revisit what we're doing. And remember that we're also using a uh, grading based method. So you need to formulate your problem just to mention Something here that in documentation also study types. Um, for instance, you go into optimization, see that uh, developers of Dakota also talk about, okay, this is your problem. You need to formulate it. You need to know what you're doing. So they give you here some general theory. So take your time, read the documentation. Uh, very interesting uh, here in the index, I think it will be here. Keyword reference, as you go into methods, you have all the methods, the uh, keywords that you need to add and so on. So in this case, we're going to use this method MFD, well, not this one. We're going to use the common F, this one. So if you click there, you will have a reference so you can check the literature and so on. And you have here all the keywords that you need to, to define. So that being said, let's open files. So the first one that I need to open, so you have a case base. We know that it's running already tested and that is your first step. Be sure that to have a starting point that is always working. Now I go Dakota case in, and this is the simulator script that how things work. 
And also I have template. These are the template files. So let me put it also there, my template file. And let's see a step by step what is going to happen here. So hopefully here you're going to understand better because it's a little bit more complicated uh, workflow that we have. So the environment entry, remember that here we, we save the output of the optimization task here in this file. So you can give it a any name here you have different entries so visit the the documentations to know the entries there then the method here you define your method so see that for instance let me use starting one this one so you have your method there you have here and define a max in iterations convergence tolerance is you don't find anything it will take default values so as you go here you will see that everything is is optional so meaning that there are some default values you enter here you will see what will be the values so if you want to know all those entries just visit documentation so in theory it's just enough to pick up a method a gradient based method this entry is to do advanced stuff most of the time single is okay variables so here you define your variables so remember in our problem we have four design variables so here continuous design variables you can also have discrete variables and so on so for us continuous is okay you have a starting point for those design variables so this is our starting point and see that i put in some comments here so in this case mentioning that if i start from here it's like in cfd you know the closer you are to that final solution the faster you know, that convergence would be so starting from here you have a slow convergence to solution instead is you kind of go closer to that solution and you go away from this let's say ideal symmetric shape uh, you will exhibit now the problem the, the the optimization loop will exhibit a, a faster convergence so small details like that you can play around with this case that is very affordable then you have upper and lower lower bounds so this will be our linear constraints our dimension size of node of our domain so x1 is limited between this and this this and this this and this and so on. so if you don't put anything it will be an infinite domain so it makes no sense because then the, the optimization tool will it will try to 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 to, to use on very large values that you need. So usually you know your problem, you know what will, will be those upper and lower bounds when you define those there. Give it a name and pretty much these are your, your variables that then you can use into your template. So we have a template that remember that is located here, template there. And this is basically what is will happen that Dakota will search into this file and then it will substitute, will find these curly braces and the name of the variable. And just to reiterate this, that I already checked, but in using OpenFun Dakota, many other tools, uh, you don't have any any problems using curly brace name of the variables. You don't find the same notation. But if that is the case that you can get a conflict between variables, you can change this delimiter. So again, go to your documentation and you can find how to do it there. But I have to be honest, I have used many tools, Paraview, many Python libraries, APIs. I never found any conflict with this uh, curly, with this notation, or curly brace na name of the variable. Should also, you need to put also some very, some, some, the name of the variables, try not to use something that you need, you know, will be used in that library. But I think never had happened to me that it would change something in, in your library. Any case, you have that. So we get rid of here, the variables, then we pass to the interface. The interface is how we link applications. So we're going to use for, there are many ways to do it for interfaces. So I think it's the best one. So we use the for, for interface. Then asynchronous means that we can run simulations at the same time. So here we put asynchronous and then you have this entry. Remember you have documentation and you can give a maximum of evaluation concurrency. So here we're telling that you can run four tasks at the same time, or you can put 400. In this case, you can put, you can put 400, but it, it is not going to run all those function evaluation because remember this case, when you are doing gradients, they are limited to the maximum number of variables. So the maximum that you can do is four variables plus the objective function. So at most you can do five or, or 11 if you are using center difference to compute the gradients because you need two points. So here, let's say, let's put, uh, let me put 10, but it's not going to change anything. This is our script, the sequential steps. Dakota is going to generate this file. This is all the 
parameters that Dakota generate to 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 do your experiments. So this is the filter that I mentioned in the in the slides. Okay, so you have here you have a filter. It is filtering that parameter file because it's in format that Salome or OpenFund doesn't understand. Then Dakota will expect a file with this with this name and it has this specific format remember here we talk about in the documentation it's very important to have that specific uh format so in this tutorial we're going to work with easy cases so it's just one single line or at most will be two three four lines depending on the number of objective functions and nonlinear constraints so it's very easy to format that so but the name must be this one and this is just save everything in the working directories and so on so leave your trace where do you have the template files so we have seen that you have this folder and you put all your template files so in our case it's this one and in the end okay bam, 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 bam. also the name of the directory and so on so this is kind of copy and paste I think I need to date this script because they are a little bit old and uh, open and the code is changing. So for instance, this entry is not needed anymore. So let me erase it so you didn't have it. So I need to date a little bit. Um, then we move to responses, objective functions. So how many objective functions do we have for quantity of interest? We have one. Numerical gradients, sure, because we never know that function instead of this. So have, they need to be the gradients need to be approximated numerically. So what method we're going to use, so we use no the source Dakota, it is in charge of that. And here you have some other options, but Dakota is okay most of the time. I would say 99% of the time is Dakota. What type of uh, of method you're going to use? So we're going to use forward differences to compute the gradients, but you have the option that to use central. So remember, central needs to function evaluations forward just one. So here, forward is most of the time, it is okay. I have to say, if whatever you're doing is inexpensive, maybe central will be the best option, but most of the time, these evaluations are expensive. So go for forward, but there is no problem. It's not like in CFD that like the, your discretization of the convective term next to be second order here. We don't have that that requirement. Then you need to have an to give uh, an a step size so your gradients when you're evaluating at least the initial step size, the initial perturbation, let's say, needs to move with some size. So you give some initial size and then that will be ad adaptively you know, uh, the code is going to, to compute that size, can be very large, very small, but sometimes, but you need to give this uh, size. So you can play with this and you will see that, for instance, if you give a very low value or you use the default value, you will see that it will be very, very, very slow, the convergence. Then if you give a larger step size, it will be much faster. If you give something too large, probably it's not going to converge. So these are, let's say, the idiosyncrasies that you have with the grading methods. You need to know something about your case. And for instance, this information, how big or how small this step size needs to, to be, it is related to knowing something. Then we don't, we don't have Haitians, and then you give the sense. So we want to minimize. So we know that we're minimizing drag, and pretty much that's all. And let's focus in this file, simulator script, which is this one. So remember here, what you have is, the sequential steps, how you run your black box tool. So first you have the preprocessing, which is the parameter variable substitution. So basically here, what we're doing is this. So we have these files and see that here we do, we do the substitution. Here we're not doing anything, just, just to show you that you can do substitutions of, of many files. So as you go there, input template, basically you're going to have these Okay, the four design variables. I think I will use these informations to write some other files, but our the most important one is this one, the templates. When you open the template that I already have it here, here's where you're going to do the, the your substitution. And that's all you're going to, at this point, you're going to have that variable. Okay, here. And now you move to the analysis. So in the analysis, remember that you're moving files. So you know that you have your case base here that is always working. So just move file from there into your current directory. Remember that also we're working in a, in a given directory that when we run, you're going to see that. Move files. Here we're renaming this one to profiles 
four points Python script. Then we run using Salome. So, to, so in my case, I have Salome installed here. So very important, please give the right path. So in my case, this is the right path I installed it here. But it's also if you are using our Windows system, Linux you know, machine, you will have it there as well. And this is how you run. Very important as well. The minus T means run without the graphical user interface. Just interpret these this scripts and that's all. Then this will save that mesh in a given format. It's UMB, ideas UMB. So this is just to convert the format, then rename some patches and run the solver. Easy peasy. And if you want to run in parallel, just put the compose part and so on. Be careful that you need to have your resources. After you have this, you move into post processing. And here's where I get that data. So we know we were open for user, hopefully. And you know that, for instance, force coefficients and so on, they are safe in this folder. So in this case, I'm using AWK. This is a uh, Linux utility to post process this data. So here I'm running to a fixed number of iterations. And this is where maybe things can get a little bit tricky. In this easy case, I know that it's enough to have a thousand iterations to have enough data to do some post-processing compute, mean values, standard deviation, or whatever you want, want to compute. So here I'm computing that, save that in this file, then just doing some bash script in Moose files. And then in the end, I'm going to have this file, which is coef. And this coi file that will have all the coefficients. So here I'm using the input information, recall that I have it at the beginning, just to have the design variables. And here I, I put everything together and I have my coefficients. So this is a, a support file. I like to do it because while running some Dakota, it's not going to save everything in that table.out file. That table.out file is safe at the end. So I like to, to have that information readable available while running. So I do a little, I do it like this. There are many ways to get that now, but I like to do it like this, but it will be up to you. And then here's where we at. Remember that these loops, they're automatic and they need to be uh, a fail safe. If something happens, you need to be able to keep running. So this is the way how I do it in this case. So see that I know that I need to generate a results.out file. So basically this is quick is telling that is this results.out file is 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 not an empty uh if this file is empty it means that something happened. So if something happened, I will have this dummy file and this dummy file it will force the simulations to keep running. So recall that I, I here I have that in the case base I, I had that dummy file that is this one. So basically something bad happens. It's going to take this file and it's going to read just the first one, okay, because you have only one objective function and it will force to run the case. So this is how we enforce that. Now in Dakota in the latest version they added an auction fail safe to do that automatically. So let me go. I think it's recover auction. So put here. So it's a very neat option. So you have it there that now they, you have it automatically, not simulation failure capturing. You have different options here. So the recover one is the one that is going to keep it uh, iterating. You have different options, recover, continuation, and so on. But usually it's important that you need to force now, in case that something bad happens, you need to, and if you want to let it run, you need to force it not to run. Uh, in this case, it's not the ideal method because I'm putting a value of one. Likely that value of one would be very far from that function evaluation. So it's better to use another method. So another method would be that you know where it failed and then you choose a value close to that value, but also you have to be a little bit different to discourage the optimizer to test again that point because you know that it's it is failing that point. So you need to discourage the optimizer to go to that point, but it needs to be close to that point because you are moving in that direction. So there are many, many techniques to do that. I have to say the implementation in Dakota, they do, it does a very good job. So I need to update this one also to add that one, but this simple case, this is okay. And to show you now a little bit how to do some scripting. So this is a case to force it and it's nothing happened. Is everything is okay? So is that file is not empty? You have here the 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 step where you are you you have the results out files. That that step is, is here. No, the, that file 
exist. Okay, so we have everything. So here is what you have. Now you compute dollar two. Remember means results, and dollar one means uh, the input file. So you have it here, dollar two, dollar one. So those are script variables. So basically here, this file TMP text and compute and see the drag coefficient, which I'm interested in. And in this drag coefficient, I I have average that quantity, and I have here how I do the average and save that in results out. So if that value exists, nothing happens. If this value doesn't exist, it means that my simulation fails somewhere here, something happened, and that will be empty because I'm not going to have this file. So what I'm doing is forcing that. And voila, this is it. This is how we run the case. So now let's launch the case real time. Okay, so to launch that, uh, remember to load open phone or oh, already loaded i think and then i go dakota minus i dakota case and that's all uh also here and sometimes i put in the comments uh but about here how to launch the case so he, this one is you put like this this complete line it's going to save the standard output here and then also if there are errors it's going to save the errors like that so this is a standard now also using dakota so it is explained in the documentation. So I, I, I advise you to use those options to have that trace as well. Might be useful. And if you look at the solutions directory that I'm putting there in some cases, or in some cases, now in every case I put this solution. So it means that I'm using Dakota 619 or open phone 11. You will see that I always, okay, here, I didn't put those files. Uh, okay, I forgot to put it there, but I, I, I always like to save that trace. So let's run the case. We're here, ready to go. Let me stick there, send, and voila. So see that I mentioned that it will create working directories. So, so when you enter, let me update here. So see that first is evaluating one function. And after evaluating that, you have the solution. It will launch four gradients evaluation. And that's all it keeps iterating. So see that here, these are running you now in a synchronous mode at the same time. So see that now this is another function evaluation. And in here, as, as it is moving, it's doing all the computations, getting gradients, determining now what is the best direction to move. But let me enter in one of these directories. So see that all the steps that I put here simulator is create you are running those steps sequentially so when you enter into this file remember that you are already in this work there here and why it is called work there let me go here into the dakota in file is because you give that name here okay you can give whatever name you want avoid by the way avoid spaces are funny characters because it doesn't like and it will crash and that is tricky to to track by the way so if you put like this it will be tricky to track but avoid that so i like to put like underscore if you want to put a spaces to make a distinction between words and so on so basically this is what is happening you are moving all these files template there so when you look at here you do your substitution everything that you are doing here you are already inside this director so see that you are moving files from this relative location into here so you are moving the case that you know already works you are moving files with the boundary conditions here also you know that you already have this profile where you did the substitution and let me show you that file this one and look at that already dakota substitute the values there you don't have any more the curly braces so dakota substituting and then you start to follow all the steps so here dakota is running and so on and something to show you here uh, i think I, I need to update this according three this are not will be this one it's a little bit old i haven't updated in a while so dakota has uh, salome sorry has changed a lot talking about salome here has changed a lot and i think it's changing for the good and and as you read this one at the end i have this this entry probably some of you already use uh, uh, Salome knows that Salome is using TCP ports that is tough and sometimes those ports are busy so this is the the, the way that I use to to do it, to kill the ports now after you open the port you kill it but as I mentioned that uh, I think this is not needed anymore at least I have done large cases with more than 10,000 no 
uh, evaluations using uh, Salome and it doesn't crash anymore. So that is very positive. Um, but as you look here, also you have all the steps, how things are done. So the geometry, the mesh, everything can be parameterized. The mesh here is quite good also. It's not easy to use, but it's a good option. And now I'm considering very seriously to use. So at this point, we have a solution. So see that 28 functions evaluations, including gradients evaluations and function evaluations. And now you have a solution here. So always read your output script and you will have everything there. So basically, this is going to tell you, OK, what you did, everything where you have the best value. So the best value is here, final optimization information, the value of the objective function, and you have here your vector. But you can have more information uh, if you go here. Remember that we save that trace. So that trace is here log. So this one is standard error, so there are no errors, just a warning, so there is no problem. And then you have here your output. As you look at here, you can have the whole trace. So here you see you will see a lot of stuff here because remember you are running Salome, Open Phone, whatever. So you have everything here. So sometimes it can be tricky to read. But as you, you look at the standard output of, of Decora, it's very clean. Okay, you don't see all the other steps. So this is what was happening. So evaluation one, remember a starting point, you get this objective function, then we run at the same time for gradient evaluation so this is a step size your initial perturbation so now you can better understand that so we say that i want that initial perturbation 0.2 and it will do it in every direction then it will find the solution of best improvement and it will move in that solution then again it will compute grade uh, another gradient and see that now the step size is different so now it's it's doing its own magic to get there and you have there or everything. So here it's computing another gradient and keeps going, 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 going until it gets to the best solution. And here at the very end, let me go here. You have best function evaluation. Okay, character here in this point, which is the solution that we want. This is the value, total time, and so on. Uh important also that here you see in this output. You see 32 uh, evaluations, but when you check the directors, you have 28. So it might happen that sometimes you are repeating some evaluations for some reason. So they actually see that you have four duplicates. So those four, du the duplicates evaluation, they are not done again. You have it already safe and the coder will use that information. So talking about that information. We have the files and then you have this RST file. This is the restart file, but in this file also you have all the information of whatever happened here. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to interrogate that restart file and also how to look for information. So this is also the next step when it comes to failure capturing. So it's for some reason your simulation crash, let's say function evaluation 17, that information is safe here. So you can say, okay, restart from this, uh, from the 17 and keep iterating. So you need to do everything from scratch. So this is our like very much this. And also you have all the trays safe there. So now that we have a solution and hopefully you run, you saw that it was quite fast. Let's, let's do some post-processing. So if I go to work there one, here in this directory, I will have Paraphone. Let me open Paraphone so see that have the solution there. Be very careful because you have also large cases. This is tough. You you can leave a big trace. So look at the mesh it's structure mesh. Very nice mesh. Uh, I didn't put boundary layer. I just another toy case to the so Reynolds though. So I didn't play with that. But you can add the boundary layer in in, in Salome with no problem. And here you have a starting point and this is the solution that we have see that we have an unsteady flow the way it is oscillating so that can make things a little bit tricky in optimization we already talked about that when we address foundations that optimization when it's unsteady it's not easy and when you have this case look at your average solution don't look at the instantaneous value because for every single value you are going to have a different optimal value so you want a global Quantity. So this will be that case. Then, for instance, if I go to work there 10, 
you are going to see how things are changing. So in work dear 10, I will launch Paraphone. Apply there and see that now it is squeezing the, 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 the geometry. Likely here, I think it's the unsteadiness is less because it's becoming more aerodynamic. It's taking that shape of the airfoil. And now if I go, let's say, work there 18, let's see what happens here. And probably will it starts to get that shape and see that this is the shape that we're talking and the shape that we mentioned here, this is what is happening. And as I mentioned that optimization is very subjective. So here we want to minimize drag. If we don't put constraints and we we'll, we we'll let it as an open problem, the optimal solution will be uh, uh, all these values will be zero with zero surface. But it's not a, a feasible solution. It's not a realistic solution. We, we put it like this and we force it to get like to this value. But for instance, if you would like to optimize LD, which is very important in aeronautics. Okay, this efficiency factor, this is not the best one. So globally speaking, this one will have the lowest drag. But when we look at another quantity like LD, probably globally speaking, this will be the, the best one because we will have a low drag, but also will produce more lift and even more if you add a little bit more curvature. So formulate your problem. This is part of the problem formulation. And also we create another video just to change and an exercise for in this working case, how to compute this for for ld and you have the evolution there we can look at the solution and let's see what happens there and you have it there you can look at your pressure field everything and all this process and also remember that part of you you can save your python scripts and you can save files and do everything you know automatically so there will be another case will be the most complex uh uh, workflow that it would show you how to do that, but it's relatively easy. And the final solution usually is the last folder, but you can look at also your, or your trace. So let's see. So here it will tell you, uh, in 28, I know best evaluation, you have it in folder 24. So let's see, but usually, okay, you have this one, but these are a small variation. So I, I am in 28 and it's telling me that is function evaluation 24 that will correspond to work there 24. So basically this was the best value. And then you have the other ones that it were, there were small perturbations. Okay. So this should be that one. And there you go. We have our airfoil and see that this was a large deformation in the mesh when it comes to, to the mesh. So we started from, from some, something large which was this one, and then we deform the mesh. So here you might say, okay, I want to use mesh morphing. Yeah, mesh morphing has limitations. So in this case, mesh morphing is not the best approach because it will break down sooner, sooner than later. So it's better to do the remeshing approach that usually is the best approach, but it might be a little bit expensive. I think computational resources today, you can do the meshing in parallel. So it's not a big, big of a deal. And now I look at there at the solution and voila, you have your solution, everything working smoothly. And as well, now uh, remember that you have all the data structure of OpenFund, you have it there. So you can interrogate all your data. You will have your force coefficients there and so on. So then you can, if you don't understand what was happening in my simulator script here, when I was doing the average, you can run now that you have a solution, you can try and run that script and you will see what I was doing. So let me show you, for instance, the first line. So I using this one, but many people will be more comfortable probably using Python. But I think I don't like to overcomplicate things, so this is more than enough. So see that this one is computing this quantity. So basically it is reading this file and using your unit to get familiar with this AWK, but basically read the records from 808 to 1008. So here I'm running to a, until a fixed number of iterations. So then there, there are some techniques that, for instance, if you know that fixed number, you need to let it run and then you need to compute the average, let's say of the last hundred iterations. So when you see that things are not oscillating anymore, you can stop. So it's up to you to put your logic there. 
Uh, then here you compute the average, you do everything and that's all. You get this quantity and this quantity you save it in a file with this name. But see that in that file with this name you have this this, this keyword there. So the, the other part that I'm doing here is that erasing that keyword. So basically now I say take this file and take the column 2, column 2 would be this one, and put it in TMP text and then move TMP text to $2, $2 is resolved. Okay, so why do I like to do this? You might say, okay, but you can save that directly in results, whatever. I like to save now, sometimes things can get very complicated. So you don't know what is happening in each file. So here I'm putting that, that keyword, okay, this is your main drag. And let me enter into the directory. So you will have all files. So talking about patterns in, this is what Dakota generates. By no means this will be useful in in open form or salome or whatever so this is interpreted so it's where you have that filter when you filter that data it will be filtered into your file will already sell so that in template and then all the post data post processing that i'm doing is moving these files here you have all this stuff but at the end of the day this is what you need to give to the code and see that it's just a single line with that quantity that you have there and that's all as you see it's relatively easy it requires you no know, Sony skills to post-process data, but as soon as you get a complicated cases, I think you will be able to do crazy, uh, crazy workflow. And just to show you this COF also, I save it. So here I have all, all the information there, the quantity of interest, I have list, drag, and moment that I can use it for something else. And this is it. Okay. This is how you do optimization, shape optimization in a, using a, a little bit more complex uh, workflow. And I think this is your starting point to do anything. So from this point, I will work in some other cases, but using different techniques for optimization, then we move to design space exploration. Let's see if I can, if I have time and the willingness to, to do also a join, but pretty much it's, it works in the, in the same field. Something that I'm really excited as well is that I'm doing also machine learning and putting XG, ball, XG boost. So the design and space exploration, we can, I'm going to show you just how to use XG boost, but XG boost, the important thing is that you need the data. So you have the data, you construct your models and your models will be as accurate as the data you are given. So if that data is garbage, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if you are putting there the best uh, machine learning technique or neural network or whatever you want to call it. It's not going to work because you have garbage. Okay. That those AI NL techniques, they're not going to guess anything. They just use what you have and what you have is bad your outcome would be rubbish. So that's all for this case. Thank you for your attention and see you next time. Bye. Okay. By the way, I forgot to mention something. Uh, remember that if you have a case here, you have all the folders. If you want to run another case, uh, remember to clean up that, that these directories. You have all this data, likely Dakota is going to give you problems. So you need to clean up. And here you have this automatic script that is cleaning up everything. So it's going to clean all the trays that you have, but also these tables out, restart files and so on. So if you type in your terminal, let me show you here. You have Dakota clean up, everything is clean. So do not forget to run another case in the same directory, clean up everything, or you create a new directory just move the necessary files. Also something important that I have seen that sometimes happens that these files that I have here, uh, they need to be executable. It's very important that Dakota case in, okay, this Dakota case in, it will call the simulator script, but this simulator script needs to be executable. And I have seen sometimes there is a problem when you extract files or if you move to another system that this file is not executable anymore. Also Dakota clean. So you need to have uh, uh, execution rights here. So see that when you look at the properties, you have X there. So to get that one, and in the case that you didn't have that, it's quite easy. You can use chmod755 and then the name of the file, and that one will make it executable. So be careful about that. So that sometimes uh, it might happen. Uh, it can be also tricky to, to track that. So if you are extracting files, moving files to another directory, I have seen that in some system it happens. So yeah, 
that's all the, the, the final warning. And yeah, see you next time. Bye.